Darling, I'm not mad. I'm here. I can hear you. I can see you. I have no control here. They are in control. I'm sorry, darling. I'm really sorry. I love you. This is my father. I remember him to be a very stern and rugged man. He owned a goldsmith business and was well respected in the Chinese community. After his first wife passed away, the matchmaker came calling and found him a 18-year-old orphan from a very poor family, virtually sold to him as a bride. This bride is my mother. My father loves her very much, though the feeling was not the same from my mother, as she always felt that she was sold to him as a bride. My father was a stern man with strict table manners and rules. He would punish us if we break the rules. He loved us though. He brought us to places. He loved movies. He didn't seem to need to work. Occasionally, he would be the arbitrator of disputes in the Chinese community. We were all afraid of him. I was perpetually curious. I liked to know how things worked, so I took things apart and put them together again. When I was 10 years old, my father passed away. Then I realized there was nobody to protect me. This was especially so in a neighborhood infested with gangsters. One evening, along a dark alley with my brother, we were pursued by a group of Malay boys for no apparent reason. We ran fast, but they caught up with my brother and beat him up. I turned around and yelled at them. Luckily, they were afraid of the attention I raised with my voice and they fled. From here, I learned that there is no security and that I can easily be violated by mere numbers. From that incident, I realized that I need to learn martial arts to protect myself. But from who? Without martial arts, I formed a group of five great wanderers in school to protect ourselves. Having achieved some strength in numbers, we now bully other boys. We made wooden rifles with rubber bands and shot red berries at their white shirts. This was to stain their shirts and land them in trouble with their mother and their teachers. I kept searching for a martial arts teacher. One day, I saw a master that shattered a big block of ice. I asked him to teach me martial arts, but he wanted me to be a member of his tribe. I didn't want to be a gangster, so I walked away. 
Those days, martial arts schools were dominated by gangsters. Riots were commonplace. And then, we see those gangsters defending their turf and intimidating the weak. One day while I was at a seafood restaurant in Katong, I saw a group of men in impressive black uniform practicing martial arts. Under the moonlight, they cast graceful moving shadows on the fields. It was beautiful. I was so. I approached the teacher and he was willing to take me as his student. This teacher became my first martial arts teacher. Some months later, my teacher asked me to spar with a six dan master. He told me that was just to give me some exposure. He then asked the six dan master not to use his licks on me, since I was only a 14-year-old boy, and he agreed. However, into the fight, he broke his agreement. He kicked me and cut me near my brow. When the fight resumed, all I wanted was to kill him. I struck his throat hard with my hands. He fell down choking and was unable to continue the fight. The moral of the story here is that if a person wants to kill you, he will, no matter the level of his martial arts, or his physique, or his age. My perpetual curiosity about machines led me into a course in engineering at the Singapore Polytechnic, and I graduated there in 1972. I then started developing a taste for luxury sports cars. So I started my business repairing limited edition sports cars. Then one day on Chinese New Year's Eve, I had to finish repairing a car from an important customer. Because of that, I worked through Chinese New Year's Eve, skipping even my reunion dinner with my family, and rushed the car to his house. But it was bad. He was furious because I was one minute past midnight into Chinese New Year's Day. Instead of appreciating me for my hard work, he scolded me for bringing him bad luck. I was so upset that I quit the business. I then became a salesman with a big company. I did well. I was making good money. Then came the sensual pleasures. The days of wine, women, and song. One day, I met this lady that made my heart flutters. I was totally enchanted. It was as if all my cells were activated in that instance. It was love at first sight. She is my true love. We got married. She will always be my wife no matter what. Even if we were to be incarnated again and again, she will still be my wife. My other true love is martial arts. I live, breathe, eat martial arts. I learn from many masters. However, to my disappointment, not all martial arts instructors are truthful in their vocation. Many of them are bully at hearts, and this disturbed me a great deal. I fought with these imbeciles and defeated them. I grew in confidence, and so did my ego. I became disappointed with people in general and wanted to seek for a greater truth that supersedes humankind. On a trip to Canada, I went to the Krishnamurti Foundation. It was on a beautiful island. I walked in the woods and enjoyed the scenery and the sounds of nature. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing true. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't be at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. Heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can feel at home.
Not finding the meaning of life from religions, I went to the Himalayas to seek. But it didn't work. And I sunk further into depression and then became inhabited by ugly evil spirits. I returned to Singapore and dumped all the religious artifacts in the trash. By now, I was deep into depression and fully controlled by the spirits that inhabited my body. I could see them taking over my body and there was nothing I could do. I couldn't get out. Until my guru came to Singapore to exorcise me. He gave me a hug and looked me in the eye and said, You are not mad! With that, I was saved.
When I was a child, I lived in fear, and so I learned martial arts. Then I wanted to be the best. I managed to defeat many martial art exponents. Not enough. I engaged in street fights. My confidence grew, and so did my ego. My ego also led me to see the weaknesses and darker sides of many people and many things. It was this inflated ego that led me into depression. In the end, I walked away from ego. I came back to my family. I came back to where love is. Love is light. I've been focusing on the shadows all these years, thinking that I could change them. Then did I learn that we can never move shadows. It is only by moving the light that the shadows disappear.